In the history of Major League Baseball, there are exactly 30 pitchers to achieve at least 58 career war with an adjusted ERA of at least 125. 23 are in the Hall of Fame. Of the 7 not in the Hall, 3 are still active. Justin Verlander, Max Scherzer, and Clayton Kershaw fit those criteria and will most certainly all be first ballot inductees when eligible. Two more pitchers are Roger Clemens and Kurt Schilling, who both had Hall of Fame careers but have been barred from being inducted. Clemens hasn't been voted in due to his ties with PEDs, and as for Schilling, well, I'll let you Google that. That leaves two players left that are not in the Hall. One of those two is Kevin Brown, who has a YouTube video already made regarding him. Long story short, he's one of the greatest pitchers of the 90s and in recent times has gained serious traction for Hall of Fame consideration. That final player on this list that is not in the Hall of Fame is Brett Saberhagen. Who is Brett Saberhagen, just how great was he, and should he ought to be elected into the Hall of Fame? Brett Saberhagen was a starting pitcher who played in Major League Baseball for 16 seasons from 1984 to 2001. He pitched mostly for the Kansas City Royals, but also spent time with the New York Mets, Colorado Rockies, and Boston Red Sox. In his career, he holds a lifetime 167 and 117 record across nearly 400 games and over 2,500 innings pitched. He has a lifetime 3.34 ERA, 126 adjusted ERA, a 1.141 whip, over 1,700 strikeouts, and 58.9 war. Saberhagen is a three-time All-Star, one-time Gold Glove winner, received MVP votes in three seasons, but most notably has not one, but two Cy Young Awards. Saberhagen took home the award in 1985 and 1989, while also placing third in 1994. As of 2023, he's just one of 22 pitchers ever to win the award multiple times. In addition to those Cy Youngs, Saberhagen also won the 1985 World Series MVP. He pitched two complete games in that series, winning both starts, and allowing just a single run. His career statistics and multiple awards, which we'll get back to later, are highly impressive. But just how good was he compared to pitchers during his era, as well as all time? Among all pitchers from 1984 to 2001, Saberhagen ranks 13th in innings pitched, 12th in wins, 26th in strikeouts per 9 innings, 6th in war, and among 48 pitchers with at least 2,000 innings pitched during that time frame, he's 5th in ERA and 7th in adjusted ERA. Undoubtedly a top 10 starting pitcher during his time in Major League Baseball, arguably a top 5. If we look specifically at a 12 year stretch from 1984 to 1995, it would not be far fetched to say Saber Higgin was a top 3 starter in the league. In that time frame, there was only a single pitcher that accumulated more war than Saber Hagen and only two that had a higher adjusted ERA. Only Roger Clemens had more war and among 57 pitchers with at least 1500 innings, only Clemens and Greg Maddox beat Saber Hagen in adjusted ERA. Over a decade long period and at worst the third best pitcher statistically. That was all in comparison to players during his era, but what about all time? Through 2023, there are exactly 256 pitchers ever to throw at least 2,500 innings pitched. Of that group, Saberhagen ranks 113th in ERA, yet 30th in adjusted ERA. He also places 69th in war and 52nd in strikeouts per 9 innings. While his Saber metrics are great, he struggles in counting stats, being outside the top 200 of this group in innings pitched and wins. However, it's worth noting his counting stats may lack due to an imbalance of innings pitched compared to the competition. What if we look solely at players with a similar workload? In the history of Major League Baseball, there have been 309 pitchers that have a career innings amount between 2,000 to 3,000. Of that group, Saberhagen ranks 90th in ERA, 16th in adjusted ERA, 10th in war, 67th in wins, and 77th in strikeouts per nine. So, not only was Saberhagen one of the top starting pitchers during the 1980s and 1990s, he's also one of the best with an equal workload. Quick side note, the reason why his ERA and adjusted ERA rankings are wildly different is due to the fact that Saberhagen spent his entire career pitching in hitter-friendly parks, and part of it during the steroid era. To further show just how incredible a pitcher Saberhagen was, let's look at his two Cy Young seasons. 
In 1985, he threw 235 in the third innings across 32 games started. He went 20 and 6 with a 2.87 ERA, 143 adjusted ERA, a 1.058 whip, struck out 6 batters per 9 innings, and earned 7.1 war. For how great of a season that was, his Cy Young campaign in 1989 was even better. That year, Saber Higgins threw 262 in the third innings across 35 games started. He went 23-6 with a 2.16 ERA, 180 adjusted ERA, a 0.961 whip, struck out 6.6 .6 batters per 9 innings, and earned an astounding 9.7 war. That 9.7 war is notable among pitching seasons throughout MLB history. In the live ball era, 1920 to present day, Saber Hagen's 9.7 war is the 42nd highest ever in a single season among pitchers. Very few pitchers in the past century have been able to be as dominant as Saber Hagen was in 1989, and since that season over 30 years ago, only 6 pitchers have matched that amount. One of the greatest pitching seasons ever from one of the greatest pitchers of all time. Everything I've mentioned so far about Brett Saberhagen raises an interesting question. Despite being one of the best pitchers ever to play Major League Baseball, while winning two Cy Young Awards and a World Series MVP, Saberhagen is only a borderline Hall of Famer. Why is he only a borderline Hall of Famer? Mainly his lack of counting stats and his lack of playing time. Saberhagen has under 175 wins, under 400 games played, and under 2,600 innings pitched. Among all pitchers in the Hall of Fame that played in the National League or American League, there are only three that have fewer amounts than those listed totals. The three are Sandy Koufax, Dizzy Dean, and Addie Joss. Saberhagen may have been an incredible pitcher, but those three were even more elite. Koufax has an MVP and three Cy Young Awards, Dizzy Dean also has an MVP, as well as two second place finishes. Eddie Joss has the second lowest career ERA for any pitcher to ever throw at least 2,000 innings, as well as being the all-time leader for lowest whip in a career. Bottom line, to get into the Hall of Fame with such a lack of playing time and counting stats, you need to be that good. Saberhagen stayed mostly healthy for the first 12 seasons of his career, making over 300 starts and throwing over 2,200 innings in that time frame. However, he would miss the entire 1996 season and most of the 97 season with a shoulder injury, needing arthroscopic surgery to repair ligament damage. He came back to have a full, healthy 1998 season, but missed much time in 1999 due to additional shoulder injuries. It was those injuries that caused Saberhagen to miss the entire 2000 season, and he would only appear in three games in 2001 before retiring. It puts into perspective more just how unbelievable he was considering he only pitched 335 innings after age 31. This is where I like to reference the title of the video. Brett Saberhagen has, in my opinion, the most curious and indecisive case of Hall of Fame consideration for any player in MLB history. On one hand, he has a notable lack of playing time, having a low number of wins, games, and innings pitched compared to Hall of Fame starting pitchers. I mentioned how there are only three starting pitchers in the Hall with fewer amounts of those three stats listed, and it only took insane peaks to get those three elected in the first place. On the other hand, Saberhagen has a case for being a part of that group, having an insane but short peak that was so elite it should qualify him as Hall of Fame worthy. You don't win two Cy Youngs by accident, and being a top 3 pitcher for over a decade is a strong argument for him being elected. To further illustrate that short yet effective time frame even more, Brett Saberhagen is one of 21 pitchers ever in the modern era to achieve at least 52 war through their age 31 season. Of those 21, just 4 are not in the Hall of Fame. Those 4 are Roger Clemens, Clayton Kershaw, CC Sabathia, and Brett Saberhagen, and I guarantee Kershaw and Sabathia will be first ballot inductees. So, in the end, Saberhagen had a short career with mediocre counting stats, but amazing Saber metrics with multiple awards, and over a decade-long elite stretch only matched by those that are already in the Hall of Fame or will be one day. After saying all that, 
Do I believe Saber Hagen ought to be elected into the Hall of Fame? It is really tough, but I say yes. Two Cy Youngs, a World Series MVP, nearly 60 war, and an insane peak all solidify my case to elect Brett Saberhagen into the Hall of Fame. I'm not sure whether this is a popular or unpopular opinion, but I stand by it. If I may quickly compare Saberhagen's career to a Hall of Fame pitcher, this pitcher has similar statistics to that of Saberhagen. Only 200 more innings pitched, 5 more war, and a 5 points difference in adjusted ERA. Much like Saberhagen, this pitcher also has two Cy Young Awards. The only notable difference between the two are 40 more wins and 400 more strikeouts. This mysterious pitcher who is in the Hall of Fame is Roy Halladay. Two very similar careers, and yet, one was a first ballot Hall of Famer, while the other was dropped off their first ballot. If you believe Halliday is a surefire Hall of Famer, it would be hard to argue against Saberhagen. Perhaps one day, we will get to see Brett Saberhagen elected into the Hall of Fame, but only time will tell.